Good to have with us today, Mark Bishop. How you doing, Mark? Fantastic, fantastic. Hunkered down like everybody else, I reckon. Quarantine, sheltered, uh, you know, whatever the case might be. Let me say it is so good to see you because you, and I know you do a lot of concerts over the course of a lifetime, but for we down here in the Panhandle and at WTJT, there was a period of time, I want to think it was in the late 90s, maybe 2000, somewhere in that range, that people look forward to the bishops coming to Baker, Florida in May for a big yep. concert. I think it happened about four, five, six years in a row, and uh, people are still talking about the bishops. Yeah, we owe a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, actually, my dad was great with the money. He's probably one of the best with the money. Uh, even when the group disbanded, he was still able to pay the musicians for another six months after that. So, well, that But I, I, I can't stop from making a joke. We always enjoyed coming down to Florida and singing. We enjoyed going everywhere and singing. We just sang all over the place, and it was you know, when our producer, a record producer was Eddie Crook back for many years. And he's the one that kind of discovered us and, and got us going. We were kind of a regional group at that time. And, and he said, boys, you're doing real good right now. You're very popular. He said, but you only get so much time when you're in the store window. He <laughs> said, now you're going to be in the store, you know, for the rest of your career, as long as you want to be there. But not everybody gets to stay in the store window. He said, next season there's something new and flashy that comes along and, mm -hmm. and they're going to be in the store window you're going to be maybe in an aisle or on the end cap or someplace but you're you're still in the store he said so enjoy this time and we ha we had a long run in the store wind and the lord blessed us for sure indeed you did and we enjoyed having you down in baker florida i want to go back in time because uh, i have not spoken with you i guess since then which has been 20 25 years ago when yeah, you, you were only you only came up to my waist last time. I saw yeah, you. I mean, just knee high to a grasshopper. You, you, you were in knickers and had a lollipop in your hand. And... Some of this stuff we need to keep between you and I. All right. <laughs> but, <laughs> when the group disbanded, um, did you immediately say, "Okay, I'm going the solo route," or was no. there a moment? <laughs> <laughs> well, then, did you think about trying to put together a group? What led you down the solo path? Well, uh, my wife, after I was home for a couple of months, said, you got to go find somebody and go sing to them. And I mean, right now. <laughs> Similar to right now, right? I mean, she's saying, Mark, you got to get out of there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't care if you go to the pasture next door and sing to the cows, you have got to get out from underfoot. But actually, it was my wife that encouraged me because when the group got off the road, I was still writing songs. I, I'd been writing a, a bunch of stuff for the bishops and some other groups. And even though I was not out singing, I was still writing the songs. I still had that passion for the music. And it was my wife who told me, said, don't you think if God has given you these songs that you should be doing something with them? And so I called um, our former at that time is our former record company and uh said i've got some songs uh i'm thinking about just recording an album just to have those and they said well yeah come on so let's record an, an, a new album with just you and i had no aspirations actually to go back out on the road or to to join a group uh, because I, I couldn't imagine singing with another group after singing with my my dad and my brother you know i just didn't want to be with a, on a bus with a bunch of strangers so uh I went in and uh, we sent some songs to radio and, and boy, it's just like it picked up right where it left off as, as well as radio stations had received our family group. Uh, they were, they were equally receiving those new songs that God had given me. So then I, I contacted the Harper agency who had been our booking agency for all those years. And they said, yeah, man, we can, we can keep you busy. And before I even knew it, uh, I was out, as a soloist. And what's funny about that is everybody that remembers the bishops knows that my brother mm -hmm. was, the, was the spokesperson. He was the out front person. And I was more about the nuts and the bolts of, of actually making the music and writing the songs and, and keeping the band together on stage. But he was that out front person. He was doing all the interviews and, and, and uh, uh, doing all the stuff on stage. And so I had to learn that part. And it took me a little while to get used to, to being out front like that. So we're talking, Kenny was the front guy, you were the, the harmony and the songwriter. So how difficult was it for you to, number one, become 
the spokesman. I mean, you're the only guy. And two, you know, if you've got a little hoarseness, a little throat problem, maybe you can cover it up in a group, but you can't do it as a soloist. Yeah, no, there's nowhere to hide. There were there were lots of times when we would be on the bus and somebody would be not feeling too great. And uh, but you could kind of the other guys could pull up the slack and maybe you don't feature that person as much uh, and somebody else would sing. But when you're a soloist man and, and they say, OK, I want you to fill this hour here, you know, you go you sing from eight to nine and I don't care what's going on. There you go. You went on the stage and. Uh, and it's, and it's not just that either, but with a, a group, you've got a built-in variety, especially, you know, with our group, we had some great musicians, so we could throw in an instrumental or two. And, and uh, we loved doing the, uh, what we called front porch singing, which was a cappella singing. So we'd break down from the band stuff and strip it down and do something like that. And uh, with a soloist, it's, there's one guy on the stage, and he's singing to you the whole time. <laughs> the timbre of the voice never changes. It's the same, you know, it's the same level. So it, it's, all, it's a little bit, I tell people that a singing career is about 10% singing and 90% other stuff that you have to get good at. <laughs> you know, so you, you better be a, a fairly good singer, but there's a lot to keeping people engaged when you're up on the stage. And, and that's why I, I introduce a lot of humor uh, into my concerts and also a lot of uh, stories. I love, I'll just love a good story, a story that's got a good beginning and a middle and an end. I can tell that people just forget that it's just one person on the platform and you become engaged with the characters in that story and the heart of that story. And well, that opens it up to now there's a whole world of people on the platform with me. That's why a lot of the songs that I write, you know, like my name is Jesus or I got here as fast as I could, or some of those songs, they, they bring other people into it. So there's, there's a lot of ways. You, I've been doing it for 35 years, so you just learn a lot of ways to, to get the message across. Did you find yourself writing songs differently as a member of a group versus as a soloist? It took me two or three years, actually, to get out of that mode of writing for a trio. Because uh, when I was writing back then, I, it, had to, it had to pass a couple of gauntlets. One was Kenny and one was Dad. So I would write the song and of course I would like it or I wouldn't have written it. And then I'd have to, uh, I'd have to play it for dad and, and see what he thought. Then I'd have to play it for Kenny. And it was a lot of times there were, it was hard to get a song that <laughs> pleased everybody. And uh, so even when, uh, and I had to think about trio harmony, you know, this, this may be a great melody, but is, but is it great for us? You know, and uh, it took me a couple of years. My first two, solo albums could could have been bishops albums because i didn't know any other way to write mm -hmm. to write that way and then by the time we did the uh can i pray for you album which is the, the album that had can i pray for you and i got here as fast as i could by that time i learned okay i don't have to worry so much about the melody supporting trio harmony i can i can expand the melodies that i use as a soloist uh, now, because I, I've got, I can have backup singers that can sing extremely high or extremely low or whatever, and it doesn't have to have that necessarily that trio sound. Are you a singer that writes songs, or are you a writer that sings songs? Gosh, that's a great <laughs> question. Um, I, I would say that I'm a writer who sings songs, basically. I, I sing with so many tremendously talented vocalists uh, that when I'm on stage, I realize then that I'm not a singer, <laughs> but it's too late because I'm up on stage singing with them. You know, they've, they've already scheduled me here. Somebody must have thought I could sing or they wouldn't have scheduled me here. But when I'm around all of these talented folks, of course you diminish yourself, you know, and you can't help but compare yourself like, wow, I wish I could sing like that. I wish I could play like that. I wish I could write like that that you know you always hear somebody that just impresses you to death and uh, but if if let me put it this way if I could only do one thing I would I would really struggle if I couldn't write anymore because that's where the heart of the message that's that's the heart of a gospel song really a lot of great singers but th that message is what makes the the singer special even can anything practically provoke a thought that leads to a song? I'm, I'm thinking about the song about uh, on the refrigerator door. Uh, I mean, it's such a great song. Um, 
can any thought that pops into Mark Bishop's head maybe wind up into a song? Yeah, I've got a I've got a song on this new album called Homegrown Tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> that is a gospel song. That's going to be a winner. Joe, Brother Joe was a mountain man. He preached the word and he worked the land. God and nature all in one accord. He grew tomatoes, beans, and corn. His overall for old and worn. But everybody knew Joe loved the Lord. <laughs> and it goes and it goes on. It's about a preacher, and he used his he used his uh, the stuff that he grows in his garden as a, a as an opportunity to witness to folks. And he goes up on their porch, and he he knocks on the front door, and they open the door, and he he's got a Bible in one hand, and in the other an old grocery bag full of homegrown tomatoes. <laughs> but the songs, are, so yeah, songs can come from everywhere. I think I, I've got a lot of songwriter friends, and I, I appreciate that they all do it differently. Um, I did a matter of fact, I did a tour a couple of years back, maybe about three years back now. It was me and Phil Cross who writes, you know, wrote all those Gold City, Hoppers, uh, Cathedral Song, Champion of Love, When I Get Carried Away, uh, Yes, I Am, all of those songs. And he writes so large. He writes about the majesty of heaven and you can just see heaven expanding out in front of you. It's just an endless horizon. And then Gerald Crabb was a part of this tour. There were four of us, me and Phil Cross, Gerald Crabb and Squire Parsons, mm. you know, and, and Gerald writes those songs that are just like I was at the bottom and this is how far God had to reach down to get me up mm. and he rescued me. So he's, he's writing rescue songs. God really, you know, reached out and, and lifted me up. And of course, Squire Parsons, all he ever did was wrote a song called Beulah Land, <laughs> you know, and he's, he's the classic, he's the traditional. And then there I was, and all of my songs where where Phil Cross writes so large about, you know, he's the all-time undisputed, undefeated champion of love. And then here I'm writing, so I write so small, I write about the details of life. So like the refrigerator door, cotton ball sheep, an old wooden cross, you know, hanging on the refrigerator door, mm -hmm. or, or perfectly honest, there was a lady who lived in our town. She lived alone above the grocery store where I got here as fast as I could. Long time ago, two twin brothers always fought but loved each other. Stuff like that. You know? <laughs> so I write, I see God in the small stuff. Phil sees God in all the big stuff. You know, and Gerald, um, he's, he's writing about where we were and where God has brought us to. And then Squire Parsons just up there singing beautiful land and everybody's crying. You know, so... <laughs> So I, I, I love, I think songwriters just have a special filter in between their ear and their brain. Mm -hmm. and whatever comes through there, there's just a lot of stuff. It's a, it's a little sifter and it just gets caught in there. You know, it's, <laughs> I've, I've rarely heard a, a sermon. I, I sit under lots of preachers, as you might imagine, and have all my life. And, uh, but I rarely hear a sermon that I get to the very end of it and I'm still with the preacher. Because at some point that preacher's going to say something that could potentially be a song. Mm -hmm. and just as soon as he says it, well, his sermon and he are going this way. <laughs> and then my brain is on a rabbit trail or on a rabbit trail going this way, you know, oh gosh, now, okay. He said that about Lazarus. What if the person that was standing there when he came out of the tomb, you know, I so saw my mm -hmm. brain's working that way. So I rarely hear a sermon through to its conclusion. <laughs> you know, I think you do an excellent job. And I was sitting here thinking, who is it that did this years and years ago? It seems like it was the Carol Burnett show where somebody in the audience would throw out a few words or a phrase. And then if it was Burnett or whoever it was, would create a song out of it. Yeah, uh, we, we've done that before kind of as a game. I can't say that it's a good song, but <laughs> you, you can make it rhyme anyway. <laughs> I want to talk about, before we go, the brand new program that you have released to radio called You're Happy When You're Laughing. Uh, that is uh, about a 60-second vignette stories that I'm assuming that you've told over the course of years. You put them into a format that's available to radio. Two questions. Uh, the concept, what about it? And then number two is, is it something that was born out of this coronavirus situation where you're going, hmm, how can I... Uh, uh, spend some of my time while I'm sitting at the house. Yeah. Instead of making Facebook videos like yeah. everybody else is doing, I've seen this, I've seen such elaborate and intricate uh, Facebook videos, people that must've spent hours and hours compiling this stuff. 
and um, and there's nothing wrong with that. We do have to occupy our time, and all of us have this creative energy. You've got to do something. But this was this was actually an idea that that uh, I had been kind of kicking around for uh, about ever since last summer, but just never had the time to engage in it. And of course now that none of us are able to go out and travel and do concerts, uh, I was I was able to engage it more. Uh, and what, what ended up happening was, um, and, and for folks that are wondering what we're talking about, this segment is not even out yet. We just announced the segment and the first segment will not air until May the 4th. So what it is, is a, a friend of ours, Greg Goodman, who does radio show prep for a, a bunch of radio stations. They send out to like 500 different people that have shows or have a station, mm -hmm. program directors, folks like that. And, and, and he, oddly enough, he works for, I, I, we don't want to say a competitor, but he, he works for a, a different record company than the one that I'm with. I'm with Crossroads Music, and they're, we just had a fantastic family relationship for many, many years and made a lot of music. But Greg Goodman, who sends out radio show prep for Daywind, is also very kind enough to include some other stuff other than just their artists, which I, I think is you know, just a, a, a very charitable thing to do. They could just stick with their artists, mm -hmm. but he'll get interview segments from a lot of different artists from other record companies. And I've done some interviews with him before and he's helped us to promote new albums. But um, here a while back when this thing first broke, he said, Mark, why don't you send me some uh, l little comedy segments? I know you do a lot of funny stuff at your concerts and I've heard you before and I love your articles in the Singing News magazine and I can see the humor there. He said, I think folks would enjoy that. And me and my typical OCD way can't just do that. I start, the, the brain started to turn and I was like, okay, how can we maximize this? I, I think I'd like a little musical cue at the start of it. So folks would know what it is and we'll put a little musical thing at the end. And, uh, and I sent him some stuff and he said, man, if you could get this to, to land right on a minute, then we could, you know, folks could start putting this in their, their rotation. Mm -hmm. And, and it just kept growing and growing until now we've got these one minute segments, one minute vignettes, uh, that's, uh, hello, this is Mark Bishop and you're happy when you're laughing. Do -do 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 -ding. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day and we were talking about the old turnip truck. You know, I've never seen anybody on a turnip truck. I don't know how they fell off of it. It goes on, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. And we just, uh, it's just stuff that makes you laugh. So the name of the segment is You're Happy When You're Laughing. It's going to start May the 4th. Greg Goodman uh, and, and Dave Wind Radio Show Prep will be sending this out to all of the stations that want to use it. It's going to be five weekly segments, so it'll be one for each weekday, and they can do whatever they want with it on the weekends. And it's free. Anybody, anybody can play it. I hope that you guys will play it. I think mm -hmm. people will get a kick out of it. And some of the first responses, we just sent the press release out a couple of days ago. A lot of folks are saying, is this going to be an ongoing thing? Before I, I program it, I want to know, is this going to be an ongoing thing? And I told them, I said, I've got 35 years worth of stories and <laughs> anecdotes and one-liners and little funny uh, pieces that I can share. I said, when I die, there will still be three years worth of shows <laughs> in the backlog. So, th yeah, this is going to be an ongoing thing. It's real easy for me to do. They're only one minute long, but it's. But I think folks are going to chuckle and smile, and we need more of that. And, too, it could open up a, a brand-new venue for you because I can see this being pitched to second radio as well. Well, you know, that's what Greg said, and, and uh, it, it, it wasn't that I was necessarily trying to to uh, to gear it just towards Southern Gospel. He said, but this has a very rural Andy Griffith show Mm -hmm. kind of feel he said this just this just feels real natural he said i could see a lot of rural uh you know stations that program their own stuff you know they have a mixture there are a lot of radio stations around here uh, where i'm at in the hills of kentucky their format is just all over the place they'll play some old country and then they'll play a gospel song and and then they'll have tradio on the radio <laughs> and uh you know and, and bluegrass and they'll just mix it up and this would fit in really great with that We've got a, I don't know if folks remember our group, but we had a, a fellow that played bass with us by the name of Steve Perkins. And he was a city boy from Cincinnati. And he came down here before he played bass with us. 
uh, he did he was on radio uh, in hazard and he did their tradeo on the radio show <laughs> and some fella called in and said i've got a bush hog for sale and steve said is that a male or a female bush hog <laughs> <laughs> and he said after that he said i had to leave they just about ran me out of town he said i was ridiculed and every time i went out on the street somebody was pointing at me and asking me about a bush hog <laughs> <laughs> well obviously we're looking forward to you're happy when you're laughing and of course the music of mark bishop as well in this time where there's no music from the standpoint of live uh where can folks find out more about mark bishop well, they can, of course, on the social media. I'm just on Facebook. I don't do the other stuff. It's all I can do to keep up with that. <laughs> it, it took me forever to figure out how to do this. <laughs> but uh, on, on Facebook, they can find us there. And I've got a website, too, markbishopmusic.com. And uh, they can learn about the ministry there. Uh, you know, there's, there's so many ways for people to listen to music. Of course, they got all the streaming stuff, and you can listen to that. But... I still just enjoy listening to the radio because there's there's a, a life to that. There's a I feel like I'm with other people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you just listen, it's it's the same as like when you're listening to a CD. I enjoy listening to to my CDs and, and my vinyl albums. I still listen to those, you know. But there's something about listening to live radio that you know, hey, I'm I'm still connected to people and a person. If anything weird happens in the world, they're gonna they're gonna let me know real quick. You know, so I just like that. Well, we're kind of partial to radio too. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, see, you notice I didn't push, I didn't push TV or, or streaming too much. I noticed that. But I'm, I know there's a lot of people that, you know, <laughs> listen to music. That, that's the thing is a lot of people listen to music in so many ways. Now I can't even keep up with it. With mm -hmm. all the social media stuff, I would never write another song if I was on all the social media that, that the record company would like for me to be on, you know, with the set mark, you need to tweet, you need to be on Instagram, you be on, on the Etsy and <laughs> YouTube and, uh, and Facebook and, and all of that stuff. So when would I have time to write another song? Yep. You know, you, you have to have that quiet time and that space for God to be able to speak to you. And if you're just constantly engaged in the minutia, then it, you know, it makes it hard to get to those bigger spaces in your heart and your head that you need to get to. Well, Mark Bishop, thanks so much for being with us. We're looking forward to more of the great music from Mark and the comedy too. You're happy when you're laughing and certainly appreciate you being our guest today. It's been a treat for me. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs>